So, you want to learn how to transform. Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to transform three of these things. So, uh, and then you're going to do the rest. I'm going to transform uh, the iPad screen, the sphere, and the can. All right. So we'll start with the iPad screen. So I'm going to turn on the iPad screen, select it, and turn that layer on. And to transform it to fit in here, we're going to use distort. I'm using Command Plus a couple of times just to move us over here. And to help me out, I'm going to turn the opacity of the layer I have selected. I'm going to change the opacity to about 60%. All right, so there's 60. While we're on the subject, the way that you can work most of these um, little numbered boxes, right, is you can click on this to get this slider. You can click in here and type in 60. Or you can click on the word and then slide it back and forth. That's the way I usually like to do it. 60%. I'm going to use the Move tool. And I'm going to go Image. I'm sorry. And I'm going to go to Edit and then Transform. Free Transform or Command T. We do it a lot. So you might want to write that one down in the first page of your book. Command T. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make it smaller so it kind of fits where I'm going. All right. Then I'm going to zoom in. A little bit more. Now I need to distort it. So I want to be able to grab these corners and move them independently. If I right click or control click in the middle, I can choose distort right here. So now if I grab the corners, they move independently. And I'm going to have to kind of figure out where these corners that are covered up are going to go. So I'm roughly throwing these out here. And I might zoom in a little bit more. Um, that looks fine. All right, so I'm going to use that line and this line to line up with my blue lines to make sure that that's where the corner would really be. And that way it makes the distortion of the perspective correct. And I'm also going to, um, I'm going to go just slightly outside of the white area with what I'm putting in here so that there's no gap around the outside. Okay. Now that I like it, I can hit the OK button here, or I can hit Return or Enter on the keyboard. I'm going to turn the opacity back up to 100. Now the problem I've got right here is it's going over the sphere and then over this phone. Even if I change my blend mode, which is right here where it says Normal, if I change that to Multiply, because it's not white out here, it's still showing up in those areas. So I'm going to make a mask for this layer. Pretty simply, you know how to make selections. We did that, right? So I'm going to turn that eyeball off. I'm going to grab, um, and it's under my quick selection tool. I'm going to right click and pick the magic wand tool. I'm going to make sure my point sample is five by five. Um, it's just so we're not getting one pixel at a time. A tolerance of 32 is good. Contiguous means it uh, has to be all touching. So when I click on this, if it's contiguous, it stops at the edge. If it's turned off, it'll get everything that's white in the whole picture, and I don't want that. Sample all layers will allow me to see this layer down here, even though I'm not on it. So if I have this layer selected and I click right here, it's, it's picking something from this layer. So Command-D to deselect. And then I'm going to go sample all layers, and I'm going to click right here. That gives me an instant mask, and then all I have to do is turn the eyeball back on the iPad, make sure it's selected, see how it's gray, and then I'm going to come down here with the, to the white card with the hole in it and click, and now I have a mask blocking out the parts that I don't want. Okay, now let's work on the sphere. So ball is the layer that I want to activate. I want to turn the eyeball on. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 60. I'm going to free transform, so it's edit, free transform, or command T. I'm going to drag it down so I'm, until I'm closer, kind of center it in here. And then this is what I want you to do. Move in closer. Whoops. Move in closer. Pay attention. All right, here we go. I want you to take the edges and um, I want you to put them out here so that they're touching the edge of the ball. So you're going to have to hold down shift to make that happen. I'm going to grab grab that one. Those are already on there. That's close enough probably. And then this one right here. Okay. 
So you hold down shift to make that happen. Otherwise, everything moves, right? Okay, now we're going to use, last time we used distort on the flat screen, but on here we're gonna use warp mode. I can right click and pick warp mode right here, or I can pick the sad robot, which is way funner, up here in the corner. See how sad he is? And nobody ever picks him, so let's go ahead and switch to warp mode. It looks a little different. We got some different handles going on here, but basically you can click anywhere in here and you can distort that image, okay? So that's what's gonna help us make the, the foreshortening uh, necessary to make it look like this is really on the ball. And here's the trick. I'm gonna grab this guy right here in the corner and I'm gonna drag it toward the middle of the sphere, but I'm gonna stop just before I hit the edge of the sphere. I'm dragging it toward the middle and stopping before I hit the edge. Toward, stop, toward the middle, stop. Now, I'm gonna pretend that there's another sphere right here, right? And I'm gonna grab, just click right in the middle, or right in the middle of the top, and then I'm gonna push it this way until that hits the edge. Right here, and push it out. Right here, and push it out. Right here, and push it out. All right, so. That helps me with the, with the foreshortening. It makes it look more like these are getting smaller around the edge. And I want to go just beyond the edge. So just like with this, we're going to make a mask to cut all this extra stuff away. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to accept that by clicking OK here or hitting Return or Enter. And then I'm going to change my opacity back to 100%. I'm going to change my Blend Mode to Multiply, which multiplies all of this color onto whatever layers it can see below it, okay? Which it also includes in this now. But you can see all that excess stuff that I wanna cut off. So I'm gonna turn off that layer. I'm gonna grab, not the magic wand tool, I think that the quick selection tool may be a better choice here, and just kinda of drag it across the middle. Oh, that's not right. I wanna make sure that this is set for all layers, sample all layers, command, D to deselect. We'll try that one more time. There we go. Now I get the sphere selected. Oh, I also have that selected. Not good. So I'm gonna, I can either go to the minus right here, or I can just hold down the option and drag it across here until that goes away. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna go back, turn the eyeball on here, and then I'm going to add the mask which just trades my live selection for a layer mask. So if I click that, there's my layer mask, and now it's all trimmed up nicely. Okay, lastly, let's come over here and Coke or Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi, you're right. Okay, so here's what I think. I think this is a whole Pepsi label, and I think that this is going to be like half of that. So I want to pick half of the label before I start distorting this. So I'm going to use my marquee tool here. Um, and let's see. I'm just going to start here and drag to where I think is the middle of the can, a middle of the label, which I think is about there. And I'm going to let go. And then while I have a, um, a selection tool like this that makes live... Uh, a live selection, the marching ants, I can drag this around. If I go in the middle, I can drag it around. So now I can put it where, what part of the label I want it to show, okay? So instead of making a mask, and there's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm gonna make this simple for you. I'm gonna copy this part to a new layer, and then we'll just have this to deal with and not these edge pieces. So with this layer selected, with our, our live ants marching where we want the label to be cut out, I'm gonna go up under layer, new, and copy, or layer via copy. So command J, and we'll do this a lot. So this is, I remember this is jump up. Whatever is on that layer, when I command J it, it's gonna copy it and put it on a new layer above it. So watch what happens when I do this. Watch the layer list. There's my new layer. If I turn this off, you can see that I have just that. That's what I want to distort. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to turn the opacity down to 60-ish. I'm going to Command T, and I'm going to move this guy over here. And 
I'm using my space bar, that's too big, to move around. And what I want to do is I want the color of the can comes all the way to the top of this rim, this lip right here. And then the bottom of the can is where I want it to end, down in here. Okay? I don't want, um, I'm not going to worry about the overlap because we're going to do the same thing with the mask, but I want to distort it so that the edges are foreshortened like if we were wrapping around. Okay, look at my ducks. Here's my ducks, right? All the ducks look duck shaped. But if I do this, look at the ducks at the edge. Don't the ducks on the edge, don't they look a little foreshortened or skinny? They're not skinny. We know they're not. It's just going around the corner. So we're going to do the same thing with the can. Here's how we do it. I'm going to drag this guy over here. I'm going to shrink it so that the top of this is at the top of the can and the bottom of, I guess I can do this. Bottom of this is where the color, I want the color to end down here. And then I'm going to do the sad robot. So click sad robot, right? And then I'm going to drag, let me zoom in here. I'm going to drag this anchor point in until it's right. It's a square here and it's right above right there. Okay, this line that goes down the side of the can. I'm going to drag this straight in, and it's right lined with that can. Then I'm going to grab this center of this and drag it in to about right there. See how it's distorting the edge? Yeah, it's pretty fancy, right? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm dragging it in until it's lined up with this kind of imaginary line. Don't worry about this chunk. We're going to cut it out with a mask or this chunk. I'm going to drag the top and the bottom in, straight in. And then I'm going to grab the middle, somewhere in the middle-ish. And I'm doing it, oh, I get a little twist. So I'm going to grab that handle and this handle so it's not so twisty. Otherwise, it'd be Pepsi with a twist. And see how it's distorted it for me? Very nice, I think. Okay, so I just, just want to make sure I'm going to drag these handles down a little bit. And I'm going to push this up so it hits the bottom of that lip of the can. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom here. I'm going to pull these up and pull this down just a little bit. And that gives us that curve at the top and the bottom of this can because it's round, right? Okay, so I like it where it sits and I'm gonna hit return. I'm gonna turn this on 100% opacity. I'm gonna change my blend mode to, you guessed it, multiply. And then I'm gonna get rid of those outside edges by creating a mask. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, try to do this again with the quick selection tool. So I've selected that and I have it on sample all layers and I'm going to click and drag. It's okay if it goes up in here because our image doesn't go there. I just want to make sure it stops at the edge of the can. If I can make that happen, I will be a happy can purr. Ha! <laughs> See how I made it like a joke out of the, the word can, can purr? Uh-oh. I'm going to hold down the option key here and see if I can get rid of that little chunk. That looks pretty good. All right, so back on this layer. The layer is selected. I'm going to go with a card with a hole in it, and boom. That's not too bad. That's A. That's an A work right there. I'll tell you that. All right, so that's it. The rest of them, you do. Okay, if you have any questions, post them on this week's discussion board, week three's discussion board, and... I gotta go. I gotta go get a Pepsi.